U.S. is growing at a very fast pace. Europe is going through its own trouble. U.K., of course, has recovered well. China is now slowing down. India seems to be a shining spot. How are you assessing the entire global situation, really, at this point in time? And what does this mean for businesses like yourselves? Well, we're overall optimistic. Um, we think the, economy, the world economy is going to grow reasonably well. Right? And you've described the elements, different bits growing faster than others. Um, we continue to believe that the fast-growing economies, of which India is one, are very important. And we continue to be very interested in, in investing in India uh, and in, uh, because we think it's part of the growth, uh, growth engine of the world economy. I'm going to come to India investments in just a bit. But because you said parts of the world are growing at different paces, uh, is this a challenge of sorts, this distorted global recovery? Is this a challenge for businesses like yourselves? You've, you're invested across countries. Uh, how do you then assess uncertainties? How do you assess challenges? Um, you know, we're a global business. We're in every country, essentially, in the world. Right. We have to look through these short-term volatilities to actually, because the investments we make have multi-year payoff, so we have to actually look through multi-year views of how different parts of the world will evolve. Mm -hmm. So we do adjust our investments based upon multi-year views, but not on one-year outlooks, right, because we're there for the long term. Which are the industries, according to you, which will drive growth for the world at large? I'm not talking about specifically US or UK or Europe or India, but which are the industries that you're betting big on? Well, we're very keen on uh, the technology industries. We think they will continue to grow and change the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually think transportation, uh, as more and more people have access to transportation and want to move around, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be very important. Um, though it's much maligned, we do think actually financial services will continue to be important mm -hmm. and continue to grow. Um, we think that um, construction, right, a construction of all sorts, that's will right. continue to be a growth, growth engine. Uh, so there are a number of industries we're focused on which we think around the world are very important. I'll take a question on stock markets before I move to ECB and Europe, really. You know, stock markets in most economies, whether it's the U.S. or whether it's uh, India or in some parts of Europe, they always rally beyond uh, the real economic fundamentals. Is that a risk that you constantly evaluate because the euphoria in the markets may not be the actual euphoria on the ground? Well, I think th the performance of financial markets and the way they move up and down um, you know, people talk about overruns, you know, et cetera, right? right? Yes. I, think, I think what that means is we all have to be resilient mm -hmm. to financial movements, right? So recently we had the, the action around the Swiss franc, right? The Swiss franc, big change in the value of the Swiss franc. The lesson of those sorts of changes is that uh, companies and countries have to be resilient to to financial shock. But can companies like yourselves ever oversee a situation like the Swiss franc coming? Because this does hit business hard, doesn't it? No, no, you can't. You cannot predict shocks. If you could predict shocks, they're not shocks, That's right? Right, yes. right. So you actually what you have to say is let us assume there will be some mm -hmm. and we have to be resilient to them. Uh, let me talk about Europe. Europe is the big fault line as far as the rest of the world is concerned. Mario Draghi is trying to rescue the economy with his, uh, you know, more than expected um, stimulus. Uh, do you think it's going to be enough? Because what the economy in that region really needs is structural reforms and there seems to be very little political will to do so. Well, I think, you know, we remain committed to Europe. Mm. Um, and I think it's very important under the headlines of slow growth in Europe to actually say, well, how are particular industries doing? That's right. Right. And it's, so the average number disguises a lot of variability. Um, you know, Europe has shown its ability overall to, to gradually evolve, mm. right? Um, never as fast as its critics would like it to, exactly. right? but it does evolve. <laughs> Germany went through dramatic change over the last 10 years. That's right. right? Um, I think there is some hope that some other countries will do so or are doing so. Mm -hmm. So we think, again, looking over the longer term, we remain committed to Europe. Uh, you remain committed to Europe, but the thing that many people are beginning to lose sleep over is, uh, and this is the huge reliance on unconventional monetary policy around the world. Does this change things for businesses like yourselves? Well, one of the things that QE, un un unconventional, right. Right, has, has created is very low interest rates. Mm. Uh, and that does mean that um, you have to think carefully about, well, how much investment income will you get uh, from, from the money you have? Precisely. Right? So that does change your outlook and the way you think about things. It also, also creates financing opportunities, mm. right? you, f funding projects at different levels of interest rates. So you have to factor it absolutely into the way you think about the business. But is low interest rate for a prolonged period now a new normal that the world will see and live with? Well, it's turned out to be a new normal if one goes back, right, right to yes. 2009. It's now been four or five years That's we've been right. experiencing it, and it looks like it will survive some time. Mm -hmm. I think we do still believe that gradually the United States will start to increase interest rates. 
uh, but it's going to be at a slower pace than think everyone thought. Let me just turn focus to India because you said you're committed to India, you have investments there. Uh, how do you assess this market right now? Well, we have nearly 10% of our total global staff in India, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and we think that percentage will grow over the next uh, few years. Uh, we're very uh, enthusiastic about opportunities in India, uh, the capabilities uh, that exist in India, uh, the ability to find fantastic talent in India. Uh, so we believe the, the Indian market uh, is very important. Like any country, like anywhere else, there are, right. you know, the, you, you've got to find the great, great opportunities there. But we, we are very committed to India. You're committed to India, you see opportunities. But you know, a, a lot of people, and we meet them and we realize it on ourselves, that India promises so much and yet delivers so little. What are the challenges that India needs to fix before people like you become bullish on India, before people like you have brands in India, really? Well, I mean, it's this, you will hear nothing different from me than you will hear from many, yes. right? That India has great promise. Um, there are obviously continue to be some some regulatory issues across multiple industries, right, the speed with which things flow right. out, and, and that people would love to invest more in India, you know, love, love to have more foreign direct investment in India, but they have to be allowed to do so. That's right? Right. right. And I think if that happens, there will be more opportunities in India and the Indian economy will grow even faster. How do India and China compare? That's my last question to you. How do India and China, people used to say India versus China, it's no longer India versus China, but how do the two really compare? How do you assess these two markets as you make investments there? Well, they're obviously different. Right? and they're in different stages of development. Mm. Uh, we're committed to both. We have significant investments in China. We have significant, as I said, over 10% of our staff are in India. That's right. right? So we are very committed to both markets. Um, <clears throat> how do they, they evolve? Because they're different. They have different backgrounds. They have different political systems, different capabilities, right? but they're both very attractive. They're both, and I don't think it's helpful for either to compare them, keep comparing themselves to each other. They should rather focus on how can we best succeed. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.